In this video lecture, we will study the structure, properties, and function of immunoglobulin A. Besides this, we will also understand the difference between secreted and secretory immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulin A is found in blood, but it is predominant in the secretions of the body. For example, in the mucus, mother's milk, tears and saliva. Structurally, IgA consists of two light chains and two alpha heavy chains. Each heavy chain contains one variable domain and three constant domains. There are two subclasses of IgA, designated as IgA1 and IgA2. IgA1 is mostly found in the serum, whereas IgA2 is predominant in the secretions. These two subclasses differ from each other in the hinge region. As you can see here, the hinge region of IgA1 is almost double of IgA2. Each subclass of IgA can exist in two main forms in the body. These are secreted IgA and secretory IgA. Let's understand these two forms. Secreted immunoglobulin A. It is written as SIGA here. Note that alphabet S is in lowercase. It is also known as serum IgA since it circulates in blood. It can be a monomer, dimer or rarely trimer. Polymeric form of IgA is formed when two IgA monomers are held together by a glycoprotein, known as J chain. J stands for joining. And it is also synthesized by plasma cells. This J chain binds to the constant region of the IgA monomers through disulfide bonds. So, secreted immunoglobulin A are the IgA antibodies synthesized and released in the circulation by activated B cells or plasma cells. Now let's see what is secretory immunoglobulin A. Secretory IgA is written as SIGA. Now, here S is written in uppercase. These secretory IgA are predominant at the mucosal surfaces. It is also a dimer. But while entering the external secretions of the body, it undergoes some modification. Let's understand this further. The B cells, which are located beneath the mucosal surfaces, differentiate into IgA producing plasma cells. These plasma cells synthesize and release polymeric IgA antibodies. Recall that the J chain is also synthesized inside the plasma cell. So, these are secreted IgA antibodies. These secreted IgA bind to a receptor expressed by epithelial cells of the mucosal surfaces. This receptor is called poly IG receptor. This receptor recognizes the J chain of secreted IgA and bind to their C terminal domains. Once bound, IgA is internalized into a transport vesicle, which moves to the opposite side of the epithelial cell. During the process, the poly IG receptor is cleaved enzymatically. The peptide remaining bound to the IgA dimer is called secretory component or piece. This IgA dimer with attached secretory component exits the cell. Now the antibody has become secretory IgA. This secretory piece thus helps the transportation of the IgA into secretions. It also protects IgA from breakdown by proteolytic enzymes found in the secretions. So, now we understand what is secreted and secretory IgA. Let's now talk about the properties of immunoglobulin A. Immunoglobulin A constitutes about 5 to 15 percent of the antibody concentration in the human serum. It is the major immunoglobulin in the external secretions of our body, such as saliva, mucus, gastric fluid, tears, etc. So, IgA guards or protects the mucosal surfaces of the body. Half-life of IgA is about 6 days. 
If you remember the previous lecture, we said that immunoglobulin G is the most abundant antibody in the serum. But, most abundant antibody in the human body is IgA. If all the production of IgA at mucosal surfaces is taken into account, then it is the most abundant immunoglobulin in the human body in terms of quantity. This is obvious since humans have about 400 square meters of mucosal surface, which include respiratory, digestive, and reproductive tracts. So, the quantity of IgA produced per day in an adult human is more than all other antibodies combined. Let's now talk about the functions of IgA. IgA is the major antibody found in colostrum of milk in nursing mothers. This provides passive immunity to the infant. It protects the infant from gastrointestinal infections during the first few weeks after birth. It neutralizes toxins and pathogens. They prevent pathogens' adherence to mucosal surfaces and thus blocks them from entering the bloodstream. Immunoglobulin A triggers degranulation of granulocytes such as neutrophils. They also play important role in antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity since they bind to the specific FC receptors on the killer cells. They are poor complement fixers and obstinance.